Good morning from the kitchen folks. It's another experimental brew day where today I'm going to attempt to make fruit pastels turbo cider. So my ingredients in today's brew are as follows. I've got three litres of apple juice from concentrate. I've got still water. It's not spring water, but it's not tap water either. And I'm using that because the tap water in Leeds is a bit chlorine-y. I'm using a jar of honey, a lemon, uh, two packets of round trees fruit pastels, and the yeast I'm going to use will be a combination of Lalvin champagne sparkling wine and cider yeast, and then this bubblegum ale yeast, which is from WHC Lab. I'm beginning this brew by just warming a little bit of the bottled water in a microwave. So the water's not hot, but it's slightly above room temperature. And I'm doing that because I'm going to begin by activating my yeast. So I'm going to add approximately two thirds of a teaspoon of the Lalvin yeast. So of the bubblegum ale yeast that I've got just here, I'm going to add about a third of that amount. Now all I need to do with the yeast is leave it and let it activate in the warmth. Now I'm going to add spring water into this saucepan. So heat on. So while the water's coming to a simmer, I'm going to add the fruit pastels and it's as easy as doing this. And of course, if you're not sure of the quality of the product, it's very important that you sample. And doesn't that look pretty? This just takes a bit of time. Lemon. Top tip, give it a little roll in your hands before you juice it and it gets more of the juice to come out easier. One sharp knife, one lemon, one easy cut, two pieces and here's the juicer and all I'm going to do is put the lemon on top of the juicer and just push downwards as I twist and this really gets all of that lovely lemon juice out. And the juicer filters the pips. So here's my lemon juice and I'm now going to add that into the mixture with my sweeties. So now I've got my honey I'm going to add probably half of this jar not the full jar and I'm just going to stir this as the heat is on and I want it all now to dissolve into what might be technically termed a sweet and sticky glue. Okay my sweeties have for the most part melted, the honey's melted and I'm going to now pour this into my demijohn. It smells absolutely delightful. There's still some sludge in the bottom, some unmelted ones. I think I'm just going to put them in as they are. So I'm just going to shake my apple juice in case all the pulpy bits are in the bottom and then straight into the demijohn. I'm just giving this a little mix around now. I want the apple juice, the honey, lemon, fruit pastels all to mix together. It smells fantastic, it really does. Now I need to pour some of this into my hydrometer tube to check the original gravity. So here's my demijohn. It's a lovely colour and you can see the uh, pastels in the bottom. That will be nice for the yeast. In here, this is what I've just poured off to take the original gravity from. But I need to take the original gravity at 20 degrees and it's currently too warm. I'm cooling this down in some cold water to speed that process up. 
While I'm waiting to take the original gravity, I'm now going to add the yeast into the demijohn. And you'll note that this is a very full demijohn and it will develop a Krausen, which is the foamy head on top. Now, if that shoots out of the top and comes through the airlock, I will use something called a blow off pipe instead of an airlock, but I'm going to see first of all what happens. So I've got the temperature to just under 20, that's looking good to me, it's time to take the original gravity. So in goes the trusty hydrometer, a lovely bounce, and I'm starting off with an original gravity of 1.074, 1074. So bung in, demijohn labelled, and I now need to put this somewhere warm but out of the sunshine and I'll report back to you in a little while to show you how it's going. Just a little update after two days. The blow-off pipe was necessary, the Krausen came out through the airlock so I'm just using a blow-off pipe right now um, and this should settle down again hopefully in a couple of days time. But all going well and that's the main thing. Hey from the kitchen folks, it's Fruit Pastels Turbo Cider Clearing Day. So here it is. It's been fermenting really nicely for 15 days. But in the last couple of days things have begun to slow down. And now I'm getting very, very little action in the airlock. In fact, it's only since I've just stood it on here in the sunshine that that's visibly moving at all. So what I'm going to do today is clear it rack it off and get it away from all the sediment and trub in the bottom. So bung out, siphoning tube in. So I'm holding my tube in place with this uh, clip and it's just above the line of the sediment there. I will get a little bit but it doesn't matter. And now the fun bit. It smells quite yeasty. Let's have a little sample. In the glass it smells a bit like ginger beer. Drier than expected, and that's down to the honey. But I'll tell you something, it's extremely fruity. Mmm, fruit pastels are a goer. So while that's going into the bucket, I'm going to add the first of the wine finings. And this is clear it wine finings from Young's and it's a two step process. So you put finings A in first and leave it for an hour. And there we go, the bubbles in the siphoning tube indicate that that process has drawn to an end. So this is what I'm left with in my brew bucket. It's sterilised inside but obviously with it being open there is a risk of contamination so I don't want to leave it in there for the hour. And here is what's left in the bottom of the demijohn. So you can see that fruit pastels, you know when you try and suck in a fruit pastel and it never dissolves in your mouth? Well, you know, this has been two weeks and, it's, and some of them still haven't dissolved. So anyway, I need to get rid of this and clean this demijohn out. So I'm now going to pour this back into the demijohn just so it's better protected from contamination. And at least it's definitely mixing with the finings very well. And that's what you need. So bung back in. That's it. And I'm just going to give this a little rinse, just because it's sticky. It's just started popping in the airlock because it's just got a bit excited, but that'll soon calm down. Anyway, I'm going to leave this for an hour and then I'm going to be adding finings B. So I'll be back in an hour's time. Okay, an hour has passed and it looks pretty much the same. There's no sediment build up in the bottom. So I'm just going to pour it straight back into the brew bucket. Oh, 
that's enough I've just poured half in and then I've got finings B I'm just going to pour some of that into the demijohn the funnel back in and pour this back in and that will mix together nicely so it will either clear or it won't clear you know if it does great if it doesn't I'm not bothered we're all used to drinking cloudy drinks these days anyway because a lot of them are it's put my airlock back in I'm just going to rinse my demijohn just clean any bits of sticky residue off the outside and I'm just going to put this somewhere now dark and cool for a few days and then we'll have another look at it then and I'll decide whether or not I'm going to bottle it all right, so see you later, folks. Morning from the kitchen, folks. It's Fruit Pastels Turbo Cider Bottling Day. So here it is. It's been clearing for a week. It's had the wine findings in it for a week, and they have definitely had an impact, as you can see at the bottom. But it isn't going to get any clearer. I've even tried cold crashing it outside. It's been uh, zero degrees this morning. It's been outside a few hours nothing is coming down so I think this is just going to be a cloudy turbo cider and I think that's because the fruit pastel sweets once they've partially dissolved in there are just hanging in the water now I don't think I can get that out of there so I'm just gonna accept this as cloudy and bottle as is so first things first I'm gonna add my carbonation drops into my freshly sterilized bottles and it's one of these per 250 ml so for each of these bottles, that's three carbonation drops. Then it's bung out. Siphoning tube in. And you can see that I'm using this clip to hold it in place and it's very slightly above the sediment line. I'm going to be daring and push it down just a couple more millimetres. And now that fun bit. So first of all, I'm going to fill my hydrometer flask. You can really smell the fruitiness of this actually. And there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube and that means the siphoning is over. So the net result is five nicely filled bottles and I've also got some in the hydrometer tube as well. So I've got my bottles ready to be bunged and the bungs are just plastic bungs which I've bought from Amazon. I've softened them in hot water first after sterilising them. The hot water makes them malleable so you can get them in and you can keep reusing them just like you can the bottles. Ooh. Ouch. Right, bunged, now I need to get cages in place. So the cages will help to prevent any unfortunate missile accidents, which does happen. This one. I've got my cages in place, so now I just need to rinse the bottles and just get some stickiness off them. I now want to take the final gravity to work out what the alcohol by volume is of this and the final gravity is 1.006 so I just want to work out the alcohol by volume now so I take the original gravity of 1.074 I deduct from that the final gravity of 1.006 and that equals 0.068 I multiply that by 131.25 and my final alcohol by volume is 8.925% hopefully after the secondary carbonation in there the fermentation with the carbonation drops I might even get that up to 9 but I will label that at 8.9%
So that's bottles labelled and I'll be coming back to these in two weeks time when the secondary fermentation has hopefully kicked in to give it a bit of sparkle. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's fruit pastels cider opening day. So quite excited about this one. Quite a different flavour to try. See how it turns out. So I'm hoping for a little bit of a pop, but hopefully not a rocket. Hmm. A little bit of a damp squib, wasn't it? Let's see how it pours. Oh, it's got sparkle and I can already smell it. Okay, so it is cloudy like it was when I bottled it. That's because of the fruit pastels. I'm wondering if I put some pectolase in at the time of putting it in the demijohn, whether that might have produced a clearer brew at the end. If I do this again, I'll certainly try that. Anyway, it, it looks okay. I mean, it's, it's colourful, it's cloudy. I mean, it's quite acceptable to drink cloudy ciders. There are cloudy ciders out there. Smells really sort of strong fruity, quite citrusy actually. Let's give it a taste. Wow, that's, there's a lot going on there. It's like a party in your mouth and everyone's been invited. There's lots going on there. It's like every single flavour fruit pastel competing. There's a bit of the blackcurrant hits me first, but then the overriding citrusiness, which comes from the dryness as well also of the cider comes through. It's extremely tasty. It's got a slight gingery beerness to it, almost. Yeah, you could almost say it tastes like maybe crabbies mixed with cider, something along those lines. It's decent, and on a hot sunny day like it is today, this is gonna go down great. I shall definitely make this again, but I will put some pectolase in to see if it produces a clearer brew. Anyway, Cheers, folks. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.